Thank you everyone for coming. Um, my name is Claudia and I'm gonna to talk to you about a spider survey that we've been conducting here in the province. So the goal of this research project is to document the spider fauna of the BC. Estimates suggest that there are approximately a thousand species of spiders in British Columbia and so far we have 860 on the last checklist. When we are complete, this will be the first comprehensive survey of the spiders of British Columbia in the province's 147 year history. Very important. Uh, this work is relevant in terms of species at risk, protected areas, and documenting biodiversity. Our ultimate goal is to complete an annotated species list for the province to know with certainty which species are rare or invasive uh, or are needed further uh, taxonomic clarification, including undescribed species. This effort also helps fulfill the museum's mandate under our guiding document, the 2003 Museum Act, which is states to secure, receive, and preserve specimens, artifacts, and archival and other materials that illustrate the natural or human history of British Columbia. Okay, so first let me introduce the other people involved in this project. Uh, Dr. Rob Bennett did his graduate work in spider systematics and is the province's foremost spider expert. After he retired from the Pro uh, Ministry of Forestry, he was able to return to his true passion, spider. Darren Copley is a critical member of the team. He is willing to venture higher. <laughs> He's the hairy one. Uh, <laughs> move rocks that weigh as much as he does. That's a lot. And then, along with Bennett, spend hundreds of volunteer hours identifying the spiders we've collected. Through his mentorship with Rob, Darren has also become an expert in spider identification. In order to discover new records and even new species in the province, we have boldly gone where no one has gone before. During the 1960s and 70s, researchers from the Canadian National Collection in Ottawa did visit the province and set traps and collected spiders as they traveled around. Their work formed the basis of several volumes in the Insects and Arachnids of Canada series. There are two shown here on the, on the slide. That covered 12 spider families there are 37 families of spiders in British Columbia. So, the series is incomplete, the survey information is out of date, and the surveys were conducted along travel routes, which were mostly low elevation. A lot has changed in British Columbia since the time of these surveys. <clears throat> Access roads to high places are actually much more numerous now, facilitated by ski hills, telecommunications arrays, and industries such as logging and mining. In the southern half of the province, this new access has allowed us to survey relatively easily in places never before sampled for spiders. But in reality, even spider places as well known as our provincial and federal parks have never had a comprehensive invertebrate inventory done within their boundaries. Given the size and complexity of the province and its ecosystems, we literally still have a lot of ground to cover. The map at the bottom left demonstrates the coverage we already have. The southern third of the province has seen the most intensive effort, but you can see that there are still some very major gaps in our knowledge. Okay, a survey like this needs a lot of support. And we've had many partners in it. We've had in-kind support, we've had funding specifically earmarked for survey work, and we've had donated specimens. Nonprofits, universities, industry, and government at all three levels have been facilitating the effort. Some examples are included here to give you an idea. Often the in-kind support has come in the form of free accommodation, which has ranged from hotels in Whistler to camping deep in the Flathead Valley. BC Parks, the Resort Municipality of Whistler, Parks Canada, and Tech Mining have provided helicopter support when the mountains are too remote to access easily. Ski hole operators have provided free lift tickets or even just the key to the gate at the bottom of the hill. So we can drive up, <laughs> we like that. So we haven't had to visit everywhere ourselves either. Specimens have been contributed to the museum through the BC Ministry of Forest, Lands and Natural Resources, BC Ministry of Environment, federally through the Canadian Forest Service and Environment Canada. Industrial partnerships have also been established, like the one we have with LGL. The specimens they collect provide us with new records and specimens from interesting localities. 
Faculty, staff, and students from a number of institutions augment our efforts with specimen donations from their various research projects. And last but not least, citizen scientists are engaged in the spider survey. For example, each year, enthusiastic volunteers in northern BC send us specimens that they encounter in the region, often from extremely difficult to access regions. When you look at our results to date, it quickly becomes apparent that we are not done. In fact, the graph shows little sign of leveling off. If it were, we'd feel more comfortable about our earlier estimates of 1,000 species. Instead, we may exceed that number as we continue to sample from previously unsurveyed regions of the province. At this point, I'd like to mention that this is the first picture of spider that I've included. And that is because I know that arachnophobia is very common. And so I need to draw all the arachnophobes who are freaked out about that many spiders in the province. To that picture, that is a fingernail. So that spider is full grown, is never getting any bigger or scarier. So rest assured, about 500, at least about 500 of the species in the province are that small. So they're less than half a centimeter. And the work involved in identifying that is done almost exclusively by volunteers, Rob and Darren. And the work that they do requires them looking at the naughty parts of those spiders. So if the spider is that small, you can imagine that the naughty parts of that spider, very small, they do this work with glee <laughs> and frustration. It's very difficult. So, and I should also say, among the family Linophiidae, which, is the, which are the ones that are that small typically, that's where a lot of new species, undescribed species are. So there, there are lots of opportunities for further research, and the work that we've been doing ensures that those specimens are available for further research. So on that note, the spider research undertake, undertaken here feeds into many other federal and international initiatives that attempt to document diversity before it's too late and to provide a platform for future research. Government partnerships include the provincial and federal endangered species ranking process. There are endangered spiders. Done in conjunction with staff of the Ministry of Environment, both provincial and federal, particularly with the Conservation Data Center and the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada. Institutional collaborations are exemplified by our work with the Barcode of Life at Guelph University. Many new records added in recent years are the result of barcoding BC spider specimens. That collaboration was initiated in 2012. Every species of spider we collect has, goes to Guelph, it has a leg removed, it's photo taken, and then it's DNA analyzed. And it becomes part of their Barcode of Life project. The identifications we provide are essential for this work. The results are genetic information that can be used by researchers around the world and by us, particularly with regard to evolutionary relationships. Internationally, work similar to our own effort has been undertaken because there is a great deal to be done when it comes to spider phonistics. For example, we've been contributing to the Field Museum on their, for their online resource, the Dwarf Spider Catalog, and loans of spider holdings are regularly requested for taxonomic revisions happening around the world. In summary, the Royal BC Museum has become an acknowledged center of excellence when it comes to Pacific Northwest spider taxonomy. This taxonomic effort is unmatched in Canada and has already proven that British Columbia is a hotspot for biodiversity of spiders, even though there is still much work to be done. Thanks. <laughs>